Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Philip Stoff and I work for Codership, the company behind Galera Cluster. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is a few features of Galera Cluster that are very useful for OpenStack and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll give you some interesting uh, food, uh, uh, some interesting to thoughts to think about. Uh, so uh, first of all, what is Galera? Galera is a multi-master application system for MySQL, where multiple MySQL servers uh, replicate together and have a full copy of the database. So it is uh, fully master-master, fully active-active, and uh, each, rep uh, each transaction is replicated to all the nodes in the cluster uh, as it is committed. So you have full data redundancy, and uh, the ability to uh, execute updates uh, on every node. So uh, it is uh, MySQL in a sense that it replicates the InnoDB storage engine, meaning that all the knowledge that you have about InnoDB uh, still holds, all the optimization advice about InnoDB and how to tune the queries, uh, all of this uh, remains uh, the same with Galera and it is also compatible with all the existing MySQL clients and tools that you may be using. For example, uh, backups can still be taken with uh, extra backup. And uh, Galera comes in different flavors, so if you want uh, the MySQL Community Edition plus Galera replication, uh, you can get Galera Cluster. If you want Percona server plus Galera, Galera replication, you can get Percona XDB cluster. And if you are using MariaDB, you can get uh, the MariaDB cluster, which again includes uh, the same replication technology. All those products are fully open source and all have excellent support. So you have uh, the ability to uh, I uh, have clustered uh, replication on top of whichever uh, MySQL uh, flavor you feel most comfortable with. And the underlying replication behaves the same. And Galera is flexible because uh, you can have it uh, single master or multi master. Uh, all updates can go to any node in the cluster, but if you feel more comfortably with uh, with the single master setups, you can have that. And uh, there is no need to change anything in your application. Uh, if the application expects a single master, then uh, it will continue to run. Yet uh, you can uh, have, uh, all you can direct transactions uh, to any of your nodes. And if your master goes down, you can pick uh, any other node and continue to execute transactions against it. It is scalable. Uh, we have uh, people using Galera with a dozen nodes. And uh, you can have uh, nodes in multiple data centers and uh, you can have multiple nodes per data center. I'm going to talk uh, later about uh, the geodistribution aspect of it. And uh, you can also combine Galera cluster and Galera replication with uh, standard MySQL replication. Uh, Galera can be a master or uh, can be a slave for your standard MySQL replication. So uh, you can uh, combine Galera with uh, your existing replication topology in order to try it out. And uh, you can take data out of Galera and put it in a warehouse or take a backup of it using standard replication. Galera can be used as a backend database for uh, the OpenStack uh, services. Uh, this uh, is actually widely used in production. A lot of OpenStack vendors use that and a lot of large clouds use that. So you can have uh, Galera instead of a single node uh, MySQL for all your uh, uh, backend uh, OpenStack services. Uh, last uh, in Paris, uh, JPipes uh, made a talk about uh, how uh, to best uh, position your Galera servers and how to best spread the load. Uh, it's on the web. Uh, it's uh, very interesting uh, to, s to view. And uh, it is also possible to have geo-distributed uh, databases for your Keystone and Glance. So uh, it is possible to share one Keystone uh, database across multiple regions using Galera. 
and uh, it is used by uh, major companies that have uh, large open stack installations and uh, you get it uh, from uh, vendors from Mirantis, Red Hat and others. So uh, the question is what else can you do with Galera except uh, have it provide highly high availability for uh, for your open stack installation and uh, there are two things that I wanted that I want to talk about today one is uh, how to use geo distribution and uh, what benefits uh, it provides and how you can actually provide Galera cluster as a database as a service to your users so that they can take advantage of high availability uh, for themselves. So first a bit about geo distribution. Imagine that you have uh, a node in Vancouver and a node in New York. Uh, with Galera it is possible to have a multi-master application across uh, across continents, across coasts, uh, without uh, any issues. Uh, so such setups uh, are actually in production and uh, the product contains a lot of optimizations related to geo distribution. So, uh, for example, when it comes to latency, uh, we do minimize uh, the actual latency that is incurred. It, of course, it is not possible to go faster than the speed of light, but uh, the protocol, the replication protocol, takes care of not doing unnecessary round trips. So, in fact, uh, the replication penalty is, uh, is uh, small. And uh, it is also incurred uh, only on uh, when the transaction is committed. So you do not have con the nodes constantly communicating uh, for every single thing. The number of messages that are exchanged across data centers is, is kept to a minimum. And uh, it is possible to have uh, very small slave lag. And for important transactions, uh, it is possible to eliminate uh, slave lag uh, entirely on a per transaction basis. So if you have uh, uh, some important data, you can uh, set it up so that uh, a write that you do on uh, one of your data centers gets immediately replicated uh, to the other one and any reads uh, reflect the most up-to-date uh, state of the database. So from the uh, application standpoint, it is possible to have no slave lag whatsoever. Any read that you make can be forced to, to be up to date. And uh, you can relax this a little bit if, you're, uh, if you can tolerate some slave lag uh, for the sake of performance. You can have more transactions in flight in your uh, geo-distributed environment at, the same at any time. Uh, we also have uh, quite a few optimizations to reduce cross data center traffic. In particular, if you have a setup like this, imagine that your business in, va is van in Vancouver has grown considerably, so now you have uh, the need of to have three nodes on the west coast. The protocol is such that uh, the traffic between the two data centers will be kept to a minimum. So if you have a transaction, for example, committing on uh, node number four, it is going to be replicated only once to node number one and vice versa. If you have a transaction committing on node one, it does not have to be replicated three times to the other data center. So the latency penalty is uh, not incurred tri uh, three times and the traffic is not uh, and the data is not shipped uh, three times across uh, across the wide area network. And uh, if you sorry. If you want to add another node, for example, node uh, 5 uh, on the Vancouver side, this node will take its, uh, the snapshot of the original database uh, again from your Vancouver data center. There will be no cross uh, data center traffic if the data is available locally. And uh, we also provide SSL encryption for the communication between data centers and this brings uh, in uh, compression as well. And uh, finally we have uh, automatic eviction of unreliable nodes. So for example, if uh, 
in this case your node number one uh, is misbehaving but not fully down and not fully up because of some network problem it will ter uh, temporarily be removed from the cluster so that the rest of the nodes can continue to process writes which helps with uh, any network issues across wide area networks when the network issue is resolved the node one can be brought back up and it will synchronize with the rest of the nodes and uh, why is that useful? Uh, why do you need to care about geodistribution? Uh, first reason is that you get a global single view of your global data. Uh, it is no longer uh, one server replicating with another server, but now you have uh, a single cluster with a single view of, uh, of the data. So it's no longer a question of uh, did I replicate correctly? Did I ship my data from one data center to the other? It is one and the same data everywhere. And again, the lag for having this uh, consistency is as uh, small as uh, theoretically possible. And uh, you can direct uh, all your read queries uh, to a local node. So for a typical workload that has a lot of uh, reads and not that many writes, so there will be no latency penalty for reads at all. And for writes it will only be on commit. And uh, finally you get uh, increased redundancy. Now your database is uh, globally replicated, so it is not in a single availability zone, but even more secure than that. And sometimes uh, putting stuff in different availability zones, but within one and one and the same data center, does not seem to provide full redundancy. Uh, outages have been seen that affect multiple availability zones, but with a geo-distributed database, uh, you're raising the bar higher. Now, you basically have to have a failure affecting more than one data center for your database to become unavailable. And if you have uh, three or more data centers, as long as at least one of them is operational, you can continue to write to your database. So now we are talking about uh, tectonic levels of, uh, of reliability here. And the other thing that I wanted to, uh, to talk about and uh, demonstrate a bit is how you can provide uh, Galera as a service uh, to, your, to the users of your cloud. Uh, because they would also benefit uh, from uh, having redundancy. And uh, as an administrator, you also benefit from uh, using Galera cluster in place of uh, standard MySQL replication for your users. So, uh, what are the benefits for administrators? Uh, first and foremost, it is the simplified uh, failover. Uh, when uh, one of your nodes uh, fails in a Galera cluster, you can just uh, flip and start executing uh, writes and treats uh, to any other node. There is no uh, external failover process to follow. It is not like you have to promote uh, a replica to be the master. This happens uh, all automatically and all inside the product. The only thing that you need to do is have your load balancer start directing traffic away from the failed node. There are no SQL commands to issue to stop uh, the replica or to make a replica master or any of that. Uh, all of this happens uh, internally and automatically. Uh, also, adding new nodes is, uh, is very simple. It is all handled uh, internally. Uh, sending the data for the new node to be started up happens inside Galera, so you don't have to take a snapshot of your existing database and ship it uh, to, uh, to the new server to start it up. All of that is uh, taken care of for you. And uh, it is also possible to use both existing uh, monitoring tools and Galera Aware tools to monitor your cluster. Uh, Galera is configured entirely using MySQL command line options and uh, it provides counters and status variables that you can plug in into your existing monitoring infrastructure. Uh, so uh, there is no need to have uh, any additional monitoring tools to make uh, sure that your cluster is, uh, is running correctly. 
And another benefit for administrators is uh, the ability to have uh, backups in uh, various ways. Uh, some of them are taken from MySQL. You can uh, use extra backup, MySQL dump, you name it, to, to uh, replicate your stuff and back up your stuff, uh, but uh, you can also use a dedicated Galera node for backup purposes, which gives you additional flexibility as to where your backup will be, how often you can take it, things like that. Uh, wha if you have a dedicated node for backup, then uh, your existing nodes are less disrupted by taking the backup and the I.O. operations that uh, backing up may require. And we have uh, benefits for end users. There is no longer need to do read-write splitting because every node can uh, accept reads and writes. Instead of uh, trying to uh, engineer the application around uh, splitting reads and writes and sending the reads to the replicas, you can just concentrate on having proper transactional behavior. Just have nice form, uh, nicely formed transactions and, uh, and the Galera takes care of the rest. And uh, also with MariaDB 10.1, you get Galera out of the box, uh, so uh, you can start with a single node cluster and expand uh, without having to reinstall any packages. You can start even with a MariaDB that has no clustering at all, and if you feel the need to add a second and a third node, you can do this uh, using your existing MariaDB packages and there is no need to think of term for master slaves pr i mean masters primary secondaries the cluster is one and the same logical thing so uh, how do you do how do you give this uh, those capabilities to your users uh, galera can be deployed in various ways uh, you can use a commercial product like cluster control by several nines you can use uh, ansible and chef scripts which are available uh, on GitHub uh, by, uh, by various parties. And since it is uh, configured entirely using MySQL uh, my.cnf, uh, you can uh, use any tool you want that would work for MySQL to start Galera clusters. Uh, we, we also hope to see uh, Trove support uh, very soon. And you can also use Juju Charms to, to start up your clusters. And uh, what is Juju is a technology to deploy entirely formed uh, clusters of applications uh, and then connect them to, to, other, uh, to other deployed products. For example, if you start a Galera cluster with Juju, then you can link this uh, deployment to, for example, a MediaWiki deployment that is also started with Juju, and uh, they will connect to each other internally without you having to configure anything. It all happens inside the tool. So what we do here is uh, first we provide the root password and an SSD password, which is like the shared secret f that the nodes use to connect to each other. And then with the Juju deploy, uh, we take uh, the required files from Bazaar, from the Juju charm, which is uh, a package definition of uh, what the Galera cluster needs to do in order to start a cluster. So with this single command line, you basically get all of the things that you need and uh, your first uh, server will be started and running. So here we have uh, on top the virtual machines. The first one is uh, used by Juju, but the second one where you see pending is the virtual machine that Juju started for us when we did Juju deploy in order to install the first uh, Galera cluster uh, node. And after it is done, you see that you have a started virtual machine and a started Galera cluster, and it has an IP and you can connect to it. And then uh, comes the interesting part. If you do Juju, Juju add unit Galera, it will start a second second node for you and automatically connect it to the first one to form a cluster. All of that happens uh, internally and so when you do Juju status you see that now your Galera cluster has two separate nodes and they are, uh, they are a single cluster and now you can either connect uh, to them and use them as a MySQL server or you can add additional Juju charm like MediaWiki for example and tell it to connect to this instance of Galera 
and internally they will negotiate whatever is needed uh, for the two products to connect. And here we have, uh, we run the MySQL client and we see that our cluster size is two. If we repeat the add unit operation several times, we will get even more, clust even more uh, clusters in our, I mean, <laughs> sorry, even more uh, nodes in our cluster just with a single command. And uh, then uh, you get uh, the IP and with Juju Expose, you open the IP to the outside world and uh, here you have a functioning cluster with just a few commands and uh, just two lines in a configuration file. Everything else is uh, in the Bazaar repository automatically downloaded and configured for you. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah? So if you have, um, since it's all synchronous replication, yeah. Uh, well, uh, if you if you take a backup, as long as the node on which you're taking the backup uh, does not slow down considerably, the cluster will continue to function. So is there a way to designate or put a node into maintenance mode? Yes, yes there is. So, so the node gets uh, temporarily desynchronized from the cluster, you can take a backup, you can shut it down, and then you can uh, have it rejoin the cluster, yes. Uh, which implies that on your load balancer you should also remove this node from, from the rotation. And uh, we have Galera Ware uh, proxy called MaxScale, which should be able to do that for you. MaxScale by MariaDB. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>